So welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video from bright and sunny Cheshire here in the simplydiag.net community hub. Um, it is bright and it is sunny today, but it's a bit cold. Got me bob hat on, got me all day to bob hat on today. Well, I think it's me all day to bob hat. Um, we've got this J11 Nissan Qashqai, not a micro. And I'm just gonna talk you through a bit of the process, a bit of whiteboard work. So the customer complaint came in. You can see I've got a notepad opened up on, on the big screen there. So a wireless display from the laptop, we've opened up notepad, I've got a mobile whiteboard now. So we've got three modules. We've got the airbag, we've got the radar, and we've got the lane assist camera. Okay, all three of those are complaining about communication on the can, and they're also complaining about power supply. Okay. So we we'll just draw a couple of lines here. Right, so our SRS, right, we can communicate with it. Our radar, we can communicate with it. And our lane assist camera, we can communicate with it. Okay. We've verified the CAN networks on all three modules, although I haven't shown you the airbag module. Um, I don't really want to be showing airbag module testing um, on video and stuff like that in case somebody somebody does something to hurt themselves or sets airbags or something like that. But we've checked the communication lines on all three modules. The radar has two separate networks. The lane assist camera has one and the SRS has one. Okay. The power supply. Now, this is where it gets interesting power supply right we can have it in live data and we can also have a voltage measurement okay in live data the SRS is good in live data the radar is bad it just so shows four dashes no matter what tool we use whether that be the KTS or the Heller or the Top Don okay I've got four dashes there so that live data pid is not showing up in, in on any of the scan tools, okay? Our lane assist camera is good. It's showing our battery support voltage, our correct multi, uh, voltage measurements, okay? When we go to the actual physical measurements, so we're load testing it, right? Does our bulb light up? Yes, it does. Does our bulb, that's a symbol for a bulb, light up? Yes, it does. And does our bulb light up? Yes, it does. That is with the test light at 150 milliamps and a 21 watt bulb, okay? If we do the voltage measurements, so a live voltage measurement using, using the meter, all right? So we'll call it a DMM, yeah? In here, we've got 13.5 volts. In here, we've got 13.5 volts. And here we've got 13.5 volts. So hammer a lot's in the next workshop, so excuse the noise. So, and all these tests, I've also dropped a test light onto the live feed to check that the voltage does not drop when I put a load on the wire. They're all, they're all perfectly capable of carrying the load. So, that's our testing procedure. Our process now, so what is common to all three modules? All three modules are powered by a few 73, okay, in the junction box, in the in the little fuse box that's underneath this underneath the steering wheel at the end by the by the A pillar there, okay. So F73, it's a 10 amp fuse, right? That fuse is good. Okay. The other thing that's in common with it. is our battery okay so as we are to say test every battery because what i think is happening if, you, if we can imagine um, a graph that's zero volts and that's 12.6 volts or the battery of a uh, the voltage of a fully charged battery yeah with just the key on our voltage 
is going to be here. Okay, it's well for what happens when we start the starter motor? It's the heaviest electrical load that can be put onto the vehicle is during cranking. What will happen is that voltage will drop down, okay, and then slowly come back up to our running voltage at about 14.2 volts, okay? The important part is, is this threshold here. From this point here to this point here, okay? If that drops below 10 volts, there's a very, very good chance. So from that point there, if that drops below 10 volts for any period of time, any extended period of time, that can log fault codes. And in the in the diagnosis procedure by Nissan and stuff like that, if it says it's a duration of one second or more, it will log that DTC. So what we need to do now, we need to go back we need to monitor our true voltage measurement and see what that battery voltage drops down to and see what the supply on the fuse drops down to during cranking. And what we'll probably find is that this voltage measurement will be more like that. And we'll, we're, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be exceeding that DTC parameter there of uh, less than one second, okay? So that's the next test we're gonna do. It's all about my process. We build it up on the whiteboard. We have a think, right, what could be doing this? We're not testing it under the conditions that it's logging the DTC. We can clear the fault codes and they stay away until we start the car. Really, really important thing that. So what we need to do, we'll measure it at the fuse, what the battery voltage is. We'll measure it at the battery and we'll also measure it at the two modules. Four channel oscilloscope, um, the, the Pico scope that we've got here from our awesome community partners, Pico Auto. So four channels, one on the camera, one on the radar, one on the fuse and one on the battery and we'll see what's happening and if there's any voltage drop outside that time parameter and is that why our DTCs are setting. Hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching. Join our community at www.simplydive.net for free and then you can upgrade your membership you got a problem car messages here on the facebook page and uh, we can we can help get you booked in or give you more information on the awesome services and products that our partners supply so thanks for watching you're awesome